morning I'd like to ask you to think with me for just a few minutes about Christmas. It's probably uh, fair to say that for most Christians, uh, Christmas could very well be the most important day of the entire year. Uh, so let's think about the baby born in a stable in Bethlehem. His name is Jesus. Human parents, Mary and Joseph. New Testament announces to us that he is the Son of God, that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and he was born of a virgin. He suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, and he died, he was buried, and then on the third day he rose from the dead, and now he is at the Father's right hand where he rules heaven and earth. What I just did was connect Christmas to Easter which is something that is, we are not accustomed to doing at the time of Christmas. We tend to think of, of Jesus, his significance as the Son of God and Savior of the world, almost exclusively in terms of his birth as a baby. But we can't ever forget that the baby born in the stable, uh, the innocent one who Mary held uh, in her arms, uh, who was visited by shepherds and then later by magi, those we call wise men, is the one who rules everything that is and will come again in glory to both judge and to bring about God's rule of righteousness and justice and peace and goodness and love and joy in the Holy Spirit. So what should we do with Christmas? It's a challenge for us, not just for preachers, but for those of us who listen to sermons and go to worship during the season of Advent and especially on those Sundays right around the day of Christmas or Christmas Eve. Let's think about the story of Jesus' birth in Luke 2. Isn't it interesting and, and very significant for us in our understanding that Luke begins by, uh, t by telling a story and situating Jesus within the story of Caesar Augustus, the great ruler of the Roman Empire. And then he moves to the birth of Jesus, which is celebrated by, in heaven and on earth. Angels sing God's praises and declare God's glory. For, uh, that God has come and shown his favor to people and to human beings and to the world. Uh, what we see in Luke is a story of two kings. The one who is a king uh, with earthly power and authority. At the time of Jesus, Caesar was the most powerful ruler that probably had ever lived. And then we have little baby Jesus, uh, born in an out-of-the-way place in a little town called Bethlehem that really was not of much importance. Except if you take the story of the Bible seriously and pay attention to its plot. It's the city of David. The city of David is, means that Jesus is part of a much larger story that was already unfolding. A story of God's promises to Israel, particularly to a king named David, that he, was, he would establish a kingdom and that he would rule over it and would have no end. It would be a kingdom then that would be of God, one that would have authority over all earthly human kingdoms, and the one that would be most important and significant for us to know and understand the purpose of our life and the destiny of the world. All of that is included in Luke 2 and the birth of Jesus, the day we call Christmas. And yet we don't often talk about these things. We tend to give most of our attention to babies, to childbirth, to their innocence and their vulnerability, uh, to the joy that comes from welcoming new life into the world. That's also an important element of Christmas. The intimacy of God with 
human beings. The New Testament says that God is with us. The Gospel of John says that God's Word, the Word became flesh in Jesus Christ. God comes to us. God becomes what we are so that we, by the grace of God, might become what God is, restored fully to God's image in Jesus Christ. So what that means then for Christmas is it marks a beginning, a new beginning. And for us, each year as we celebrate the birth of Christ, it can mark a fresh beginning for us, remembering our baptism, we are children of God, we are deeply loved by God, and that who we are as now God's people is for the benefit and for the good of the whole world. Christmas is a wonderful time in the life of the church, and uh, my hope is that this Christmas season will be that for you. A time to remember and a time to hope. A fresh beginning and uh, a fullness of joy as you go forward celebrating that God is with us. And for that we will always give our thanks and praise. Amen.